Ed, welcome to the show, man. Here we are. Yeah, here we are, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Oh, dude, it's my pleasure. So what, what are you doing in town? I, I had a studio session that I had to get to. I, pl I played the Empire State yesterday, and then I shot a music video last night, and then I had the Today Show today. I'm here with you, and mm -hmm. then I play the Irving Plaza tonight, and okay. then tomorrow I do MSG. MSG, I've heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then what do you do after MSG? Do you go home? I fly home and then I play the equivalent in England, which is called the, the O2. Uh -huh. And then I've got a Christmas gig in Hackney and then I'm playing something with Elton John to promote this. I, but, but I could go through my diary, but it's yeah, yeah. every day there's something. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Yeah. So we've known each other over email for a few years now, just talking about watches, yeah. et cetera. So it's great to finally meet and just kind of talk, talk Absolutely, stuff. man. Absolutely. And I'm, you know, I, I, I love, I love the magazine. I love the website. I mean, the amount, the amount of my friends that will watch this and be like, oh my God, you met Ben. <laughs> that's, cool. that's completely absurd, but I, yeah. I, I appreciate that. No, but man, you're like in the watch world, obviously you're like, the guy. Yeah, that, that, that's very kind, for sure. Yeah. So how did, I mean, how did you get into watches in the first place? Uh, it sounds really odd, but I, I, it was a toy, they, they were called toy watches. Yeah, I uh, know the brand. And you could, you could clip them out. Yeah. And uh, I basically, it's like pre-signing my record deal, I hadn't, you know, I hadn't ever really made any money. I made about 500 pounds doing a gig, and my friend of mine had a toy watch, and I'd always liked it because you could mix, it, mix and match it with... Straps. Yeah, you could yeah. just... So I, I went out, I bought the watch, and I bought a green strap, a black strap, a white strap, an orange strap, yeah. and then that was my watch that I just, I just revolved. And then when I did my first tour, um, which was like 2011 early, I'd made a bit of money and um, I always said like, because well, I had the toy watch, I was like, when I, when I eventually make enough money, I will buy the watch. I'll buy one watch and then that'll be my one watch for life. As everyone says, of course. a man just needs one watch. That's right. Or woman. Uh, you just need one, one watch for life and, and, and blah, blah, blah. And I went and it was a, uh, what was it? 41 millimeter rose gold, like chocolatey hublot, big bang. Mm -hmm. Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I loved it. And, yeah. that was, and that was my watch. And it had like a, a kind of Kevlar strap in it. And, and, I, and I wore it for, for ages. Yeah. Ages and I, re I it was for, for me that was it and 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 I was done and then you know I did another tour and then I started looking at a uh, an AP volcano and I was like quite like that so that was when the straw that broke the camel's back because mm -hmm. as soon as you get one that isn't the one and you just get one more mm -hmm. then it's just like oh well, then I get another one after that and get another one and my third watch was a uh, uh, Patek Nautilus. And um, I think it's 5726. Mm -hmm. And I was playing in New York. I got booked for a bat, bat mitzvah. Uh -huh. And they said, what's your fee? And I'd been looking at it on, online and I just went, that. <laughs> 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 Not knowing the price. I was just like, I knew I wanted this, this watch. So I got that. And that's when I think everything changed. I think, it, I think then it was like, you know, like you, you wear a Hublot Big Bang out, certain people notice it. Sure. You wear a Royal Oak out, certain people notice it. You wear a Nautilus out, that's when the watch heads start going, oh hey my now. God. Yeah. And then, so that was when I met John at the Grammys and he saw I was wearing that and then we got talking about that and he yeah. actually, he sent me a, a 5970 um, and he said, you should buy this. And I remember it was like, it was like crazy, crazy course, money. Yeah. Um, uh, in hindsight, it's about four times that now. Yeah. But I remember being like, I'm not going to do that, John. Like I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not like serious, serious. We're not there yet. Like you. Uh, and then, um, you know, I kept looking at it, and then I was touring a bit more, and I kept looking at it, and touring a bit more, and then, it just. It's. It's one of those things where it would just be the next level up. And interestingly, recently, I've kind of gone yeah. levels down, and I've, I feel I got. I basically, I got put on a list for a, a Tiffany, fifty-seven eleven in, two thousand fifteen or something like that. Mm. And uh, I was like, it's going to come when it comes. Like, I don't know, like, yeah, how, yeah, how long. Yeah. And it arrived. Uh, Kelly from Tiffany hit me and she was like, oh, we've, we've, we've gotten this is like a year ago. Yeah. And I was like, oh, great. And it arrived the, the morning that my daughter was born. Like, oh it literally, God. like, came to the front door. And then suddenly we were going to the hospital and I had this thing on my wrist. And oh, wow. it's now I don't know if. I ever need another watch. This is like the luckiest lucky charm of yeah. lucky charms. So um, yeah, this is the one that 
I pretty much wear all the time now. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to talk about there from the watch guy perspective and life, of course. But I think it's important to point out to the listeners at home that Ed Sheeran had to wait how many years to get a 5711? Five, yeah. And so, like, I, I think Tiffany, that, Tiffany, of course, obviously, Tiffany yeah. stamps. Um, I think like <laughs> there's so many people out there that just assume somebody such as yourself, you know, would say, like, oh, like Ed will get it whenever he wants. But it's really not. Well, that I think way. there's some. I mean, there's some things. I mean, obviously, like as you know, like with authorized dealers, like you get higher on the list the more and more you get. So. Right. Like if you've bought 50 watches with Rolex and they bring out a new one that's hard to get, like you're probably going to get it before right. someone else. And with, you know, I've, I've I've been buying Protect for the best part of like 10 years, and um, yeah, I just like I would. It's not it's not that I get stuff instantly. Like John definitely gets stuff before me. I mean, oh, the me stuff too, that John's sure. got. <laughs> he's on a, he's in a different league for, from almost everybody. Yeah, yeah. But then John's been doing it for the best part of 20 years or 25 years or whatever. But but yeah, like there's definitely still stuff that I wait for. Like if I if I ordered a, a, a like standard Royal Oak tomorrow, I'd probably have to wait a couple of years for it. Right. It's it's funny you mentioned like the, the Nautilus is kind of where you started and it's kind of like now where where you are as well. And like the watch for me that was that. Like I had a Submariner, had the Speedmaster, but the first great watch was a um, uh, 5402 Royal Oak, like the A series Royal Oak. And that happened when I went to go visit AP. It was the first watchmaker I ever. You got an AP on today. And I'm wearing an AP today. And it's the exact same thing. It's like kind of where you start is kind of where you end up as well. And of course I wear a lot other a lot of other things, but like on a random day, on a random whatever day of the week it is, Thursday I think yeah. with Ed Sheeran, I'm wearing a Royal Oak. Uh, it's amazing how you kind of complete that circle often with watch. watch. Yeah, and I, f I feel for me the only the only time I'd ever take this off is if I was doing like an event, and I because I feel I, f I feel like I've put too much into it to not wear anything ever again. But I, yeah. I think you know having something that is your the what like I would love to hand this down. Mm -hmm. to, and that, and this feels like one. It has a story behind it now. It's not just a. I got on a list and I got a watch that was hard to get. It's right. like I can't say how fortuitous it was. It literally arrived as we were leaving. That's and, amazing. And yeah. sized for you and everything. Well, I, <laughs> I have the I have the kit in my uh, backpack. I mean, as you yeah, should. Right? Yeah. Well, no, I I basically like. Whenever I go into a watch place and I don't know how to remove the links, I'll get them to teach me, and then yeah. I'll, and then I'll buy the kit, and I have resizing kit in my stuff just just in case. Just in case, you never you might know. Be, you yeah. might be anywhere in the world and get and get something. I sometimes would buy like a vintage. I, I was in Japan and I bought a, a, a vintage sub Submariner yeah. and was able to size it myself and then play the show that night with it on. And yeah, I. Uh, I don't know, I feel weird like having to wait a few days to then go in and then wait, it takes so long to yeah. then take the links out and stuff. And yeah. yeah, so I just have the little screw thing that pokes them out. And That's amazing. So while we're on the topic of Nautilus, we have to talk about like the, the hottest news in the watch world right now, which is yeah. the Tiffany blue dial Nautilus. What do you think? I like the fact that, I mean, I'm a big fan of Tiffany stamps. And um, what's so weird is I didn't know about Tiffany stamps until uh, watching John on talking watches because he had the same aquanaut as me, yeah. Tiffany stamped as well. Tiffany mine was mine was Tiffany stamped, and I didn't really know that that was a thing. I just bought them from right. Tiffany in New York because Kelly was my contact, mm -hmm. and so I had sort of like five, six, seven watches that all had this tiny stamp on. As soon as he said that, and he was like, "Oh, but look closer and look closer," and I was like, "Is that a thing?" And yeah, so from from there, but I never I never really knew that it was because it was never like a big fanfare to get right. a Tiffany watch like now. As I said, as I said, the first time I walked into Tiffany in New York, there was like three Aquanauts just in a case that you could just go, oh, maybe this one, this one, or this one. Like it really has changed. Um, but yeah, on 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 the subject, I love 5711s with different dials. Uh, this is, I mean, it's very bright. It is very bright. As you said, if you if you got one, it would. You'd, I'd say it's more of a. Uh, well, maybe it's not a female watch, but Tiffany is so in line with that. The, yeah, yeah with, I think. With, with, with jewelry, with, with, with that, I mean, this is such a, a specific look. You know, this, I mean, that watch, even this watch kind of goes with everything. That is a very specific look with, with, with a bright blue dial. I think. probably would rock it, though. I, I, I yeah. kind of have to, right? I, I think you have to, yeah. but I like it. I like it. I think it's, uh, I mean, I'm interested to see what they do next with, um, with the Nautilus. The Nautilus, yeah. Yeah. Because I imagine it's, do you think they revert to the 3800? Like, is that the... Smaller, you mean? Yeah. I, I don't think so. I, I think it'll probably... I would hope they get a new movement. We get a new movement in it. Um, I would guess like one millimeter larger. And again, I, I don't know anything. I haven't spoken to anybody, to be clear. Um, 
Wait, well, I, I lie a little bit, now, but all, <laughs> all for the sake of the, of the, the show. No, I, I truly don't know about that. I think it's, uh, I would guess a little bit larger. I think we'll probably go back to like a, a blue dial, like a gray, maybe gray, like mm. a, a real proper gray. Um, you, you need something that is very kind of up, up, up the center, like, you know, like that appeals to everyone. And Tiffany blue does not, obviously. It does because everybody just wants it because it's so, so hot right now. But yeah, I think we'll get a new movement, a slightly larger case, maybe something in a new metal like a titanium or, or something, which I think a lot of people... That would be... that. Yeah, yeah I, I, think, into that. I think Patek and Rolex, like the two big brands out there, like I think people don't think they pay attention. Like they definitely do. Like they're paying attention to, like if you look at the the only watch clock that they did this, this year, like that is basically inspired by a James Ward Packard clock from the probably 30s. Like they're, they're dialed. They know exactly what they're doing. And even the stuff that like a lot of people don't pay attention to, like the, the ultra slim split seconds, like those all have historical references. And, you know, as, as you likely know, Patek made some amazing watches in titanium probably 10, 20 years ago that now belong to a prominent collector. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if that came into the collection in some way. Again, I truly know nothing on that, but I could see it being a thing. And there's rumors of Rolex doing a titanium watch you may have seen. I mean, I don't know why more people don't. I think it's a great metal. I, I, I completely agree. I mean, when, when we did our Laurent Ferrier, which I showed you before, the first one we did was titanium because it's like you want, that's a travel watch. You want something light and easy that's hard. Is it hard. difficult metal to work with? It is, it's harder. It's harder, but it's not, I mean, it's, it's not that hard, right? Yeah. They figured it out. Um, so there shouldn't be a premium. The only time you get a premium with, with titanium is really just because, like, you have to buy the material and to machine it is slightly more complicated. Yeah. Um, Mate, it'll be interesting to see what, what happens then. I mean, I'm, I'm interested to see when the first one turns up on the gray market. How quick do you think? I think soon. I don't know, man, because 170 people... I, I don't know, because I think that the people that they're, they're dishing them out to, and it's not gonna, it's all going to be people... That they know very well. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And it's, it's also interesting, because, like, as, as you may have read, like, it's basically up to Tiffany who gets these watches. Like, if you don't, if you don't have a relationship with Tiffany, you're not getting the watch, you know? And I'm sure we both hey, know... I found, I found out, I emailed, like, five different people yeah. that usually would like that, and, uh, yeah. Nope. Well, one of them came back, so we'll see. <laughs> No, it's uh, it's it's an unusual thing to to give a retailer that much kind of clout in the decision making. You know, it really. I mean, as Terry said in that in that story, like, it's up to Tiffany. If Tiffany, you know, it, it could end up going to people that may not have been protect buyers, but maybe they're big jewelry clients or or something like that. That and, that would be interesting. Yeah, no, it's, it's almost really nice. cooler as well. I think I I think like. As you well know, I mean, you, you have a collection and I have a collection, and if you manage to get this, this would just be you know, a great part of your collection. But it would almost be cooler if it went to a big jewelry buyer and it was their only watch yeah. that they wore. It really that, would. That, that would kind of be cooler. To see that on the wrist of, of, of a woman or somebody that is just, like, as you said, kind of a diehard. Who just, who just loves just the fact yeah, that yeah. it's a Tiffany watch. Yeah, and I think that those are the watches, like on vintage stuff, that, that kind of really attract me. It's like, this is just a watch. It's part of your life. It's not precious. It's just, mm. it's just part of you. And I think probably like you wear, wear that watch, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So what else are you into these days? Yeah, have, I've got into like commissions. Yeah. Commissions. I love, the, I love small watch brands. There's one in... Uh, Japan called Kaguchi Nakagawa mm -hmm. and I met them when I was over there really sweet guys and yeah it's like a I'd say it's similar to a Calatrava it's 38 millimeters like really really beautiful mm -hmm. be beautiful watch um, yeah and Roger Roger Smith uh, he made a kind of pair for me and my wife I had a 40 millimeter she had a 38 but they look exactly the same uh, with kind of cherry blossoming engravings, like a really, really simple movement. And um, so this is kind of like breaking news in the watch world, the fact that Ed Sheeran owns a Roger Smith, which is like a very, it's like two. the deepest of cut. You got two. Yeah. It's a very deep cut in the watch world. Yeah, I, well, I think because, because he, there's not a hell of a lot of amazing, like British things that are still owned by British, you know, Mini is now owned by a German company and I think Rolls Royce is owned by, like there's certain, all the like big titan brands of Britain that were sold off age, ages ago, but like the watchmaking side of things with George Daniels, I mean, he was a, you know, this he's world world renowned. Absolutely. Um, and uh, Roger has got the same 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 skill, the same clout, and uh, I yeah I, I I actually heard of him first on your website. I read. Oh. And I think I contacted this. This this is this is going back. This is like 2013, 2014. Yeah. And I contacted him and his wife and uh, got on the waiting list. Yeah. And then yeah, it was um, 
uh, he made them for he made them in time for me and my wife's wedding basically, and we 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 wore them. That's amazing. Yeah, they're great. They're really really great. Yeah, it, it's kind of you know we were talking about it earlier. It's kind of like the the ultimate watch, right? I mean, really handmade, like to an extent that even Patek in some cases. But like buy one dude. Like yeah, it's correct. it's like whenever people see it and they ask what it is because it's not like a, I was so surprised to see that you you had one. I've never ever seen one in in the wild before but yeah. um i just say look there's there's this guy roger and he learned how to make it all by hand. i love the story of him with george daniels where he just kept going back and yeah. being like is this good enough is this good enough is this good because it really shows uh work ethic and perfection in a craft and doing your ten thousand hours and i think with something like watchmaking like it has to be perfect yeah. like it has to be there's no there's no shortcuts and what's the be, point in doing it otherwise right yeah and th to be able to do that like i've, I've been to the protect factory in, in Geneva mm -hmm. and everyone there is super super skilled in doing their thing so there'll be one person making one thing and they'll do it exactly and another person making one thing and there's this kind of production line of real real intricacy and then you think of Roger and George and lo I mean lots of other watchmakers in the world you, who was the American guy you were talking about Gene Clark Gene Clark and these guys they do each of these things yeah. but on their own and yeah. and in their own way, it. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's fascinating. It's fascinating, but um, yeah. I mean, there's 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 that. I've got. I mean, t to be honest, I slowed down a lot when, like, I was sort of getting them for. I was getting watches every time there would be achievement, or I was on tour, I was in in a city. But honestly, when this arrived, and I had my daughter, and I just felt like just kind of pulled back a little bit and right. and slowed and slowed down. And uh, every now and then, you know, like when the uh, when the Olive uh, 5711 came, it's like there's every now and then there's something that you're like, OK, okay that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. OK. But yeah. How about you? Uh, I mean, Roger, my, my Roger Smith, which I've, I've talked about, I think, somewhere on the site, you know, that I waited four years to get something like that. And that, you know, my, my name's on the back like that. That is my watch. And as I told you before, Roger was the very first, literally the very first independent watchmaker I met ever, you know, probably. 2009. Like, have you visited his? I never have, but we, we've, you know, the, the crew has. We've shot videos there, and he's been here a bunch. We did a talking watches with him, actually. Um, he's yeah, amazing. I remember watching that. Yeah, and uh, he's just the nicest guy, and he's just so different than even the Swiss independent watchmakers who I know and love as well. Um, and so it was, it was kind of a dream to have a, a piece but with him. But what class is as an independent watchmaker? Because Patek are technically independent. They, they, they are, yeah. yeah. I, I guess for, for me, or how most people view it, it's like kind of low batch, like small right. batch independent watchmakers. Patek is, Rolex is, I mean, even AP is, uh, et cetera. But yeah, for... So I, is AP not LVMH? No, AP's independent, yeah. Right. By, mostly by a family. Um, but I think, you know, Roger and the people who make stuff by hand, Philippe Dufour, Kari Gucci line, yeah, yeah, like yeah, th yeah. those type of guys, there, it's like there's commercialism there because like they have to pay their rent just like we all do and these are expensive things but like it just doesn't feel the same you know it's like sometimes like I'm I'm from you know Rochester New York like middle of nowhere upstate New York both my parents were teachers like having like a middle class mindset towards all this stuff I think is, has really served me well because it's like it becomes it can become really weird at a certain point like when people care more about the watch on somebody's wrist than they care about their family their daughter their their etc for sure uh, and it really it's easy to kind of fall into that trap and well, it's I'm, good to kind of dial it back. and i think even more so now i mean we were talking about watches as investments uh, when i when i came in and i think even more so now like i feel like people care more about a watch if it's worth a certain amount Correct. they go they they won't go oh, tell me about that what's the story behind that they'll yeah. be like oh how much was that how much yeah. is that worth and I feel like I think that's what is great about your website and people that read your website is that it's actually people that love watches no, like what what I love even about John you know like I saw John three nights ago and he was wearing a G-Shock and I love that you was know it no, it was a different. It was a different one. No. It was a different one. But that goes back to me with the toy watch, or me. I my my best friend Fred bought me um, uh, a Hadinki Swatch for my birthday that I love wearing, and it, it's less about the the impressive wow factor and more about the just hey, I just like watches, and this one has this story, and this one has this yeah. story, and this, and I think that's actually what's what's cool about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if, if there's one thing I'll say about like us and our communities, like we're just a bunch of nerds, you know what yeah. I mean? It's just like, we're just here for the love of the thing. Like there's no question like this stuff costs money, everything does. Um, but but you, it's the same with, 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 with cars, man. You know, yeah. like you can have, like I know a lot of people that are petrol heads that have 
you know, like these car collections with mental fucking Ferraris or Bugattis from the 30s or yeah. something like that. But then they'll also have like uh, a Golf Mark II yeah, that's yeah. like souped up or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And like it's it's more about just being into the thing. Yeah, and I think that's just it. That there's there's different ways to appreciate the thing. And if you do it with like, you know, like an, an earnest sense of, of reality, it's it's all good, you know? There's a lot of people that don't, of course, but that, that's a whole And thing. I'm sure you see a lot more of them now, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, again, I mean, Mayor and I always talk like, you know, he used to live right up the, the block here and we go out and have dinner or whatever. And like, we'd be able to wear a watch like that or a 6263 Daytona and like nobody gave a shit. They would care that John Mayer was sitting there, of course, but like nobody gave a shit about the watches on our wrist. And now anybody that goes to a restaurant down here in, in Soho, they know everything, yeah. everything. And they know exactly. And they'll say, oh, did you pay retail for that? Or did you like, did you pay? Like, Mate, you pay? I was wearing a uh, 39 millimeter Pilot's Mark IWC the other day in the middle of middle of nowhere. And someone yeah. was like, oh my God, Pilot's Mark. I don't, yeah. 39 millimeter. And I, it's so, cause sometimes there's, there was sort of this transitional period where people would know it was this brand or this brand or this yeah. brand. But now like the, the, the knowledge of everything right. is mad. It is, and it's, I mean, we were talking about it earlier as well, like this homogenization of taste, which is kind of like, I think, driven by Instagram, if I may say, is just like, why, do, well, the Nautilus is a great watch. Like, we've both owned them for a long time. I will always own at least one or two, but is it worth, you know, the, the, the secondary market price of, let's say, 100,000 plus for 5711? You know, it's, it's, it's so tricky when you can buy. I would say, you know, just from, I, so I never, I never liked steel bracelets. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's why with the first watch buying a, a Hublot, I wanted a Kevlar because I, I wanted to be on stage and swear. I never wanted a steel bracelet. I have to say, man, like in terms of the design and the feel and everything, I would say yes. It is. I okay. You heard yes. it here first. Yeah. I would say yes. <laughs> um, but that's like. You know, I think like it, it, with the sum of its parts and actually what's in it, it is a steel blah blah blah. Yeah. No, right. but I, I think if I hadn't been on a list, eventually I probably would have done that. Right. I mean, I, it's one of those things where it's like the the only reason I say that is like when you compare it to what else is available, even from Patek at a hundred and change, there's so much, right? I mean, there's current fifty one seventy P's. You know, I mean, just really incredible stuff that from a from watchmaking perspective is just objectively more impressive. I mean, yeah. do you think they just take 5711, the new one, and just go, right, it's X amount now? And they well, just... look, I mean, I can tell you this. Like, do you retail, think that's why they've nudged it with the Tiffany? That's what I was going to say, right? I mean, like, that's almost double what retail used to be. Like, retail used to and be And they say it's because of the, they say there's more work to put the engraving on the back, but it's just... <laughs> I mean, sure. No, like, let's go with that, you know? 25 grand, really? I mean, that's the thing. It's like, look, the, the, look it, it's one of those things where they're, they're I, look, if I were Thierry Stern and I was looking around, I was like, wait a minute, I'm selling this watch for, say, 28,000, 29,000 retail, which means you're selling it to the dealer, the authorized dealer, at probably 60% of that, we'll say, roughly. So we're saying, well, I don't know, 18,000 bucks, something like that. And now there's trading on the open market for 100. I would be like, what the hell, man? Like, this, like, we're making this watch. We created this. Like, we should receive some of that upside, which I actually agree with in some way. But to jump the price that much so quickly is... But then there's the balance of like, if you want that, then make more of them. And then that's not what they want to do because it has right. to be. So there's a, you kind of... You can't win. You can't, you can't win. None of us can win. I think the, the, the really interesting thing, actually, in the very first issue of our magazine, John Mayer interviewed Thierry and we talked about that in particular. And he's just like the idea, like he could make as many Nautilus as, as he wants. I kind of respect his, the, of what he's doing with it. Because um, it does... It also, there's a, there's a specialness in it as well for the customer where they f actually feel like if I'm on a waiting list for five years and I get it, I feel like, oh my God, I've got something really special and really in, important here. Yeah. If I was able to just walk in any shop in New York and, and buy it, it's, it's good, you know, that's cool, you can, you can get it. But as you know, in, as, as you know with, with watchmaking and collecting, like with your Roger Smith, waiting all that time to get it and then getting it and then putting it on your wrist and knowing that there's not that many out there. Yeah. And that being your kind of, spe you know, you say your name's on the back of it. There's not another one like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's cool. It is. Which is why I think stuff like Tiffany stamps, it's the next level of that. You know, that's the next thing. Or even, even having a piece unique that they made for you, that's like the next level of it. It's, um, yeah. It, it's, I mean, talk about like, an, that's a family business, which is hard to, to imagine. But that is still a family-run business. Well, I th you know, I, what I liked about the family business a aspect of it is when we were there, his two sons were being taught how to make pocket watches and really, really understanding the inner workings of everything. Like being like, you have to learn how to make this to even understand the company. And they're, you know, they're doing trial and error and trial and error. And when I spoke to Thierry, he was like, that's what my dad got me to do. And I made a pocket watch and he got me to do respect the process of watchmaking, yeah. which is which is cool. Have you gotten into any pocket watches? 
I actually bought a Patek pocket watch. Yeah, I bought one from it was from nineteen. I want to say it was from nineteen forty six. Mm. Like a, it's like an old, old, old one. Um, and I bought, I bought it. The thing is, like with pocket watches, I always want to wear a watch anyway. You've kind of got it there to have it. That's your backup watch. Yeah. Yeah, and that feels weird. But I guess your yeah. phone's your backup watch. Right, in, so now you're free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's mad. The phone is a pocket watch. It sure is. Fuck. Yeah. It's an Apple pocket watch. Yeah, but you don't you don't carry a phone. I don't carry a phone. No, I haven't had a phone since 2015. I'd like that to be to be known here. This guy is the only person I know, including other some fairly famous people, that that does not carry a phone. That's yeah. really. I mean, it's remarkable that you can exist in in a day like today without a phone. I got really really overwhelmed and sad with a phone. I just spent my whole time just in a very low place um, and I got rid of it and it was like a veil just lifted. And how long ago was this? 2015, end of tour, end of tour. And it wasn't, it wasn't even like a, I didn't so much cut contact with people, I just limit contact with people. It's not like, the, the thing that would stress me out is getting a text from someone and then you text them back. You do, you spend time, you text them back, you'd send it and then you get a reply like that and you go, Oh fuck! And then you kind of go, yeah, yeah. and then and then you'd be getting other texts, and you'd yeah. kind of be going back and going. Whereas now, I have an email that you email, and I have friends email, and people yeah. email, and like every few days, I'll sit down and I open up my laptop and I'll answer 10, 10 emails at a time. I'll send them off and I close my laptop, and then yeah. that'll be it. And then I'll go back to to living life, and I don't feel overwhelmed by it. Yeah. And man, it's good. I mean, it's it's the the best thing about it is uh, not as, aside from mental health and feeling better about everything, is the moments that I have with the people I love in person, uh, un, uh, uninterrupted. I could be having a conversation with you over dinner, right? And we're really getting into it and talking about some serious shit. Yeah. And my phone could vibrate in my pocket. And even though I'm not looking at my phone, yeah. I go, who was that? Well, I wonder who that was. What was that vibrate? Oh, there's another one. Oh, I've got two texts. Maybe that was important. Shall right. I check my phone now? I'm having a conversation with Ben. I shouldn't check my phone. But I'll... And it just, I'm kind of listening to you, but also I'm thinking that. And, uh, you know, I go out for meals with my wife and it's uninterrupted. You know what's funny when I go out for meals with my friends and then sometimes there's like 12 of us and I'll be at the table and just everyone will be on their phones. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be like, good chat, guys. And then suddenly <laughs> everyone sort of uh, puts, puts away. But, it, mate, they are... Like, yeah, phones are just, it needs to, they need to go like a step back. Mm -hmm. It needs to be like what they were when. Like a flip, like a star tag. Like a Blackberry Bold yeah. with, with BBM. Uh -huh. That's where it was. Your big BBM guy? Oh man, I want BBM back. <laughs> BBM was the one. I bought, I bought a Blackberry Bold because I thought I was going to get back into having a phone. And so I set it up and everything. And then I got on it and I was like, oh fuck. No one has BBM. <laughs> Literally nobody has BBM. Isn't that mad that a company like like Nokia and BlackBerry, the two like arguably biggest phone companies, just yeah. Did I mean I think of like Kodak? You know, I mean Kodak was everything like 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and now it's 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 a shell. I say that because I'm from Rochester, which is where Kodak used is to it? be. And, and it is uh, literally a shell. Yeah, I mean they, they like they they sell like kind of like fun kitschy like film cameras like for for Instagram that like Gigi Hadid uses, you know, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. I, have a, I have a question for you because I get asked this question sure. all, all the time from friends who are now, and this is less, less for me and more for, more for people uh, watching and for me to tell mates when, when, yeah, when they ask. So everyone obviously watches, there's a big thing now, people, there's a boom, people are getting into them. Uh, what is for you if someone's going to enter in to the watch game yeah. and they get an automatic, what, what do they do? Because I've been telling people go Seiko okay. at first. But yeah. what would be your... So, we're, we're, I mean, I think it depends on, on what price point, of course, but I think... I'm saying like 500 to a grand. It's Seiko, 100%. I mean, you know, Jack, Jack Forrester, you know, wrote an amazing story about like basically a $99 Seiko that you can get on Amazon. Automatic. Uh, uh, it's, it might be manual, but I actually think it is automatic. I forget the reference. Um, but you can buy wonderful Seikos for less than $200, $300. And that, that's absolutely the place to start. From there, I mean, I think Hamilton Field watches are great. You know, yeah. you get that kind of cool, rugged thing. Those can be hand wound on a NATO strap. Like, they look badass, you know? Uh, and then you get into the, the Tissots and, and, and Longines. Uh, we did a collaboration with Longines that I, saw that, I think yeah. is, is great, you know, for 2000 bucks with a chronometer. But I think, like, as you get into kind of like higher end stuff, I think Tech Hoyer is great. But if you're going to have like one watch, and I'm completely biased because this is where I began. It's Omega. Just, 
it's a Speedmaster, man. You know, yeah. it's like the thing went to the fucking moon. You know, it's like, and that's, that's a real story. And it's like that plus like, you know, hand wound, chronograph on a bracelet. You know, Tom Hanks wears one. Like, yeah. it's, it's, an, it's an icon, you know. And it's also, I love the Daytona just like everybody else. It's less than half the price of the Daytona and you can get it, you know. And it's like, is it ever yeah, going to be worth it? I've never got one. I've never got one. I change got... that. No, it's uh... I probably should change yeah. <laughs> that. So we talked about Nautilus. What other in the Patek world? Like, what was your holy grail Patek and have you gotten it? Yeah, well, I guess I guess fifty nine seventy. I've got a few fifty nine seventies, um, which I think are, I, it, same as same as Nautilus. Just the way that they fit and sit on the wrist feel perfect. And there for me, it's like if I'm going to, I wore one to my my wedding. If I'm going to an award show, it'll be that. But I think gray, Grail wise, gray, Grail wise. Remember uh, Kelly got me to do an event for Patek mm -hmm. and she was like, I'll, I'll, I'll get your watch if you, if you play it, which is kind of why, why, why I did it. And I, <laughs> I had a look on the website and I didn't really look at any prices or whatever and I, I just picked a uh, 5208 oh, and okay. she was like, yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't, I can't. And I was like, why not? And she was like, uh, she explained the, the, the whole thing. And anyway, for my, my 27th birthday, I, um, I went, but it was like a process of getting one. Like you have to, you have to be interviewed and be approved. Actually and then, Yeah, actually into Like I went to the offices and sat down, got interviewed, talked about it. And then when the watch arrived, I sort of came and they taught me how to, I had, like they, it was like a whole thing. They put it on a bit of paper. They used the, um, the, the minute repeater and there's like, you get given gloves with it. And it yeah. was like, it was like a, a thing. And then I put a, 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 a sort of rubber strap on it and I play live with it. And I love it. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. Yeah, I love it. And so when, when you did that, was that here in New York or was that in the UK? That was in, that was in New, New York. And yeah. I, mate, I, the, you know, I've, for, for what that watch is, I've worn it. The, the music video that I mentioned, the 5970s, uh, is a music video called Take Me Back to London. Mm -hmm. And I wore that. We went to, you know, this part of Birmingham, we're in the pub with like all these people. And yeah. it's a watch that, you know, I've been with American rappers and they've had, you know, sort of completely iced out watches and they'll kind of take a picture next to it. And no one knows what it is. And I right. quite like that, that aspect. I actually gave it to John in um, uh, Japan. I saw him in Japan and uh, uh, he saw it and he was like, oh man, you know, I could never play on stage with one of them. And I was like, why don't you do, why don't you do it tonight? And he, he, he wore it on stage for his gig. In Japan? Yeah, in Japan. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah They're could... cool. They're cool, man. Yeah. I mean, so th that, how long did that take to get? That's a question I've always been curious about. I'd say like a year. Okay. I'd say like a year, but I don't think they sell a lot of them. So I don't think right. it's a like demand thing. I think it's a, oh. we have two sort of thing, but it's uh, there. You know, I've seen uh, this. Who, talk, who talked about the one on a talking watch? Some, someone talked. Tony Fidel. Okay, yeah. and he does wear his. He and I think it, yeah. I think the the cool thing about those is you're more likely to see one of those in the wild than you are to see uh, an an I don't know probably the new Tiffany fifty seven eleven. I mean, you'll see a couple of the Tiffany fifty seven eleven. You'll see my Instagram a lot. That's the yeah. thing. People want to show they got them, yeah. but in terms of actually wearing them out, out, out all the time. Yeah. Like this has a massive dent in the bezel, and like you, you, you're not gonna you're not gonna get that with those. Those are gonna be worn, shown, and in a safe. I hope if we do get one, we wear them out a lot, though. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, Richard Meal, ever gone down that uh, that road? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, do you know, I what I loved about them originally is I like I love a sports watch. I love um, something that's light and easy to wear on stage. Mm -hmm. I bought my first one in 2012. 20, early early 2012, and what, which is like prehistoric in Richard Mille years. I mean, that's yeah. like early early days. Well, what what buzzed me about them? It was it was it was a choice between that or it was a, a, a Dan is it Danish company Lind 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. So I wanted to get something with like a you know easy strap. Linda Verdlin had these um, uh, sort of like fabric. I remember. Yeah, like, cool. And uh, I wanted to get something that was light. Uh, easy to use on stage and had a um, Velcro strap basically. And so I bought this thing and no one knew what it was and I fly under the radar every, like everywhere. It would just look like, I know people say they look like posh G-Shocks, but you know, I'd it would fly under the radar yeah. everywhere and I'd wear it, you know, to, I would go out to the pub with my mates with it. I'd, I'd play on stage with it. I'd wear it with suits. It would yeah. just be this, this thing. And then I would say 2018, that started changing and then suddenly it just became this this thing this thing yeah this thing of uh uh almost 
almost it's it's a it's a wealth status symbol now. It's yeah. basically just to like, oh, you've got one of them. You're you're, and I just have really pulled back and like right. I. I'm in a in a place now where I don't know what to do with the, like because if you wear them out, it's super dangerous. And you know, if you, I don't want to. The one that I bought in 2012 is like one of my favorite watches. It, it's the um, America edition, like with the with the orange and, and black, because my album theme was orange and black, like yep. a tiger. Mm -hmm. And so I bought it for that album tour. But yeah, it's a it's a it's a weird one with the. With the because I'm super happy for the brand, obviously that they're they're doing well, but yeah. it's just it's now not something it's that it's taking on a new meaning. Yeah, I feel uncomfortable wearing them now. It's right. like and you're you. Yeah, no, but no, but even from even from a point of view of like it used to be, like watch nerds didn't really get it, but they kind of appreciated like the uh, materials that were used or the movements that that were in it. But I think even watch nerds have like. You know, they they would be like, okay, it's not a it's it's not a classic, yeah, yeah, fifty seven eleven or whatever. But I think even watch nerds now have kind of pulled back because it's now, it's even though they're doing amazing things in in watch making and the materials that they're using, I think the use of it as a status, it's the status symbol aspect of it has kind of gone above all of that for, I don't know, yeah, yeah. It's a, I'd find, I feel I feel I would feel uncomfortable wearing one now. Got it. I'm going to run through some brands. You can say yay or nay. AP you've had. Yes. You're an AP guy. Yeah, well, I was. So I had the, I had the Volcano, and that, that, and that was it for a very, very long time. And then when they brought out the ceramic, yeah, people that's, what, that. that's what dragged me in. That's what dragged me in. And I've only got, I've only got two ceramic ones, and I wear them a lot on, on, on tour. I've, I've actually, a friend, Francois, wouldn't mind me saying, but I've, I've sort of tried to convince him to make me one for... For tour, like a special one for for tour, because I love, I love, I love them. Again, they're light, they're really comfy to wear, they're smooth, they're um, great movements, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they're just they're just fan fantastic. But I never really was like super deep with AP before then. Got it. Vacheron. I've never owned a Vacheron. No, I've never owned a Vacheron. A friend of mine just 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 got one though, and they're they're fantastic. Yeah, but no, I've never I've never owned one. Okay, uh, Langa. Long, oh man, Adesis. Yeah. You know, Adesis. Before this, I mean, I still I would wear. I ba basically in my mind, I t when I do Germany, like I tour Germany, I'm there for like two two months, and I love Germany. It's like one of my favorite countries. So when I'm in Germany, I wear nothing but the. Well, it was the. Uh, it's it's the Adesis. Now I have a few. I have a few Langers, but the Adesis for me is, it. You know, it's it's the classic. Steel, it joins the family of steel watches, basically. But for me, it's the, cl it's the clasp that you can uh, make bigger or make, right, or make the, smaller. The micro that, adjuster. That, for me, is the, I don't know why watch brands don't, don't do that, because hum human beings fluctuate. I fluctuate a lot. If I'm in a hot country and I've drunk a lot, my wrist gets fat. Yeah. And this gets uncomfortable. I yeah. take it off. It I, would put, I would put on this, the Hadinki swatch. Yeah. And, uh, but having a watch that you can just go and... Make it like I mean it's great it's great and they look they look online not great mm -hmm. but in person they're so cool they're yeah. so cool because they, they took a little bit of heat when that came out people were like eh, not so sure about this but I think it's the same as you were saying for the code um, code 1159 I think yeah. like that you know you, you you can't you can't judge something based on a uh, sort of press shot on a website mm -hmm. ever done a Grand Seiko no. No, I haven't yet. If you like uh, Japanese things, that's that's a good one. For yeah. You. Yeah. Um, you've never had an Omega either. No, I do. I do have an Omega. I this <laughs> this sounds weird. So I am bang into James Bond, like really, really, really. really <laughs> I mean, James I get Bond. it. Yeah. And uh, I um, my f <laughs> I didn't drive, and then I got driving lessons when I was twenty five. And my well, you didn't know how to drive, like you no, didn't learn I to got, drive. Yeah. I learned to drive when I was twenty five, and my first car was a, a DB eleven. <laughs> <laughs> but with the DB11, I bought a, uh, uh, the Bond Seamaster Got from, uh, from uh, Skyfall. Yeah. Um, or Spectre. Spectre or Skyfall. No, Spe Spectre. So that's my, that's my Omega that, that I've got. What did you think of the last film? I liked it. Yeah. I really liked it. Yeah, I really liked it. I was uh, approached to do the song for it before. Basically, Danny Boyle was doing it before. And right. I'd just done a movie with, with, with Danny Boyle. So we were sort of starting to work on this. And then I don't think the script's worked or whatever so then it sort of segued into another thing but the film he was going to do was really different and this I, I, I liked it I really liked it I don't know I think 
Story-wise, it worked that he had a daughter, but I think if they were going to do a new James Bond film, it could have been cool if his son was called James and then suddenly there's another James Bond who's an orphan kind of mm -hmm. thing, you know? Mm -hmm. If it, Oh, shit, I shouldn't be giving that away. James, Spoiler alert. James Bond dies, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> it was a little... I, I didn't know he was going to die. I was like, whoa, James Bond just died. I mean, that was like a, a big moment. Yeah. I mean, I liked, I liked the movie. I, I have a, a, a lot of people that I know that... that didn't like it. Didn't like it, yeah. I actually, uh, I tried to get the um, Marlon Brando uh, uh, one from Apocalypse Now when it was up. Did you really? I just didn't assume it would go for that much. I was like, yeah. it's quite a niche thing. Who? So I, I remember I, I sort of inquired and made a first bid and they were like, oh, no, no, yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no, it's uh, the, the watch auction world is a whole nother conversation. I mean, that is just, it's outrageous at this point. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but yeah, that's, I mean, I, I love, I, what I love every year is the, um, is the, uh, own, only watch because it's kind of every brand sort of tries to outcool each other. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, when they put out the Titanium fifty two oh eight, that was the uh, that was the peak. Yeah, that's a good one for sure. Do and you know who has that? Uh, I could take a guess. I, I don't know for sure, but I, I you know a few few in the WhatsApps world, yeah. we could find it for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I know what I know where the Titanium five thousand four is. Right. Yeah, that's a good one. That is a good one. Yeah, because yeah. that was also before before like watches got, I mean they were crazy, but like I think you paid like two or three million bucks for that. Now it would be like ten. Bucks. So what do you think of the new the new uh, is it is it a two four oh four the the new version of the fifty two oh four fifty two oh four what what do you think of that? It's it's not my favorite. I I love a, a five thousand four, and I I mean John is like the king of five thousand fours. I think those are great. Um, fifty two oh four doesn't sit super well on on my wrist because of the size. Yeah. Yeah, and, and something about the architecture of it just doesn't work. Like, I think another watch that I mentioned to you earlier, like the, the 5270, I love. And people talk a lot of shit about that watch because it's not the 5970. I think it's a really good watch. I so really I don't know why people talk shit on it. I think probably because it's not Lemania movement. I sure. think that's probably the only reason. But I th I mean, it, it, yeah, it kind of does exactly the same it, thing. It does. And I think like for, for me, like the 5970 I've, I've had and, and I love that, but like, I tend to think of the things that like I identify with me and, and my life and like when the 5970 was out, I couldn't afford it, clearly, you know, I had no chance of getting that. And so like when the 5270P came out, I was like, like this is the perpetual in platinum of my lifetime, like the one where like I'm in the moment. And so I, I, I was able to get one and I, I, I wear that watch all the time. I, I, I love it. And I think with time, that's going to do really well. I think all those, like because Nautilus is so hot, I think that the classical watches are going to start to come back. 5270P yeah. I really love. Mate, I think Calatrava's in a big way. Like yeah. I'm seeing more and more of them on 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 people. There's yeah. like a gray, a gray faced Calatrava. That's new one. Yeah, really yeah. beautiful. Yeah. What's the most random watch you bought in the past twelve months, or past few years, we'll say? Uh, oh, I got given. My friend Johnny gave me a a, a Heinz watch. It's like Heinz. a yeah. It's a it's a it was an American. Com I think maybe it's Hamilton. Uh, but it's from, it's really small, it's probably like 36 millimeters, and it's uh, manual wound. That's cool. And the um, uh, um, second hands is a Heinz ketchup box. Oh, Heinz ketchup box. Yeah. I was like running through like, what is Heinz? Well, because I did a, I did, so I don't really do brand endorsements. Right. That's like, also I just don't know if anyone would buy anything if I was recommending it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like if I was selling perfume, would you buy it? <laughs> well, probably not. <laughs> but um, but I always, like I'm obsessed with ketchup, and uh, I always said if I did anything, I'd do a Heinz ketchup advert. And I got in touch with them because they don't really do adverts right. with celebs in it. It's usually yeah. just random shit. Right. I said, would you do one? And uh, now I've like I've done one. I'm just about to do another one. So and so he gave me that. That that's a really cool gift. What do you mean you're obsessed with ketchup? What does that mean? Well, I mean, I would have ketchup on the things that people would frown for me to have ketchup with. Such as? Well, I think, you know, I would not have it on a slice of pizza until I got to the crust, and then I might <laughs> put the crust in ketchup. So I, you really love ketchup. I like ketchup. I've eaten it with apples. <laughs> I've, uh, you know, I have it in pasta. <laughs> in pasta? Well, it just depends, man. Like, it's, I mean, it's a bit different now. Like, I can kind of cook, but when I was young, I mean, I grew, I grew up with my brother and we ate a lot of like we were vegetarian when we were younger and there wasn't great vegetarian food then as there is now and ketchup just spiced it up a little bit you know you have a fucking a burger that's gray and you put some ketchup on it and you eat it and it tastes good and then yeah i think i think i'll probably um kikuchi nakagawa have made two watches cool. uh and i think every watch that they bring out i'll probably get i've got one coming from roger that um 
is I basically said to him like a bunch of stuff I knew that he'd never made before. Right. And I was like, would you make a watch that's this, 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 and this? And he was originally like, oh, I don't know, I yeah. don't know. And uh, I think he's going to do it. So I won't, I won't go into too much detail, but we can do a thing on it when it, when it, when it comes. But it's definitely like the first of its kind, Roger Smith. Um, so yeah, there's that. And uh, cool. a, a Bamford, um, I got... Oh, actually, that's something to talk about. I used to, I mean, Bam, uh, George doesn't really do it as much anymore, but Rolex he... Stuff. Well, he used to customise anything for me. He used to, like, I used to go in and, uh, I mean, I say used to, he still kind of does on the, on the yeah, spot. Yeah. But um, with Bamford, I mean, he's, uh, there'll be a lot of actual um, real watch nuts that will think it's a sin to do this. But Not I, at all. Bamford, I mean, first of all, George is the nicest human being on earth. Yeah, yeah, he's, for sure. But, but, but if you take, like, a Nautilus and well. I, like... I, I completely matte, matte blacked it, and uh, but it's cool. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I want to show you this. Okay. This is what I gave um, everyone at the end of tour. Oh wow. That's amazing. So all of my touring team got uh, that, and I sent one to John because he 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 hooked it up as well. That's incredible. These th these watches are amazing, right? Tudors yeah. are just the best. They really are. I made big pilots for all of my, um, me and my tour promoters and my manager for when I played Wembley Stadium. And I gave it to my, um, my friend and he just never wore it. He, he never wore it. So I never really thought about getting him a watch again. And then when we finished the tour, I gave him this one and he wore it every day okay. until the day he dies, yeah. But um, I think the big, the big pilot is one that is not, I think there should be more of a boom on that. Yeah. I think they're just, they're just such great, I think because of the size of them, people don't really go for people them. People get scared as, as yeah. much, but they're they're great, great watches. I bought the, the uh, for my twenty second birthday. Um, I bought a Muhammad Ali one. Do you remember that? I do. And that's that that I wore for like the entirety of of a tour. Yeah. Um, and then I have this the the Wembley one, which I wear every time I play Wembley. Basically, it's like that's my cool. the watch. Yeah, I have you seen in general. We did that collab with them, obviously. Like it's yeah. Thank it, you for that. Bob. No, of course. Um, it's it's a great brand and it does feel like and, you know when when I in a previous life I used to work at a, like in like business like finance shit it was always considered the anti Rolex like if you're a young guy 25 years old and you don't get a Rolex you get an IWC Portuguese or a Big Pilot or something like that and it just it it's it's still a strong brand obviously but it does feel like there's a lot of opportunity there yeah well I think I think almost the reason why people love it then and now is as I said like. Uh, well, I bought for all of my mates' thirtieths. I bought them all watches based on their personalities or what, 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 yeah. whatever. And uh, two of t two of the people that I was buying for are not materialistic people at all, and they would feel really uncomfortable having something that was worth even more than two hundred dollars on, right. on on their wrist. And I bought one of them a it was thirty four millimeter IWC, IWC and like a, a tiny tiny pilot one, and one of them a thirty nine. And they wear them every single day mm -hmm. and don't even question, they don't look expensive, right. they don't question it, they, they don't mind knocking them about, they go hiking with them, they go swimming with them, they go fucking skydiving with them and they're just great. I think they're just great, they're, as, as you say, they're the anti-Rolex, but I think they're almost the anti-everything. It's right. not a... Anti-hype watch. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's just a, a, what, what, what you're saying about the Hamilton watches, they're just a, it's just an everyday knock around. Cool thing, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Dude, Ed, I really appreciate the time. This has been Thank amazing. You. This is great. Um, and we'll get you some time for talking watches. Yes, yes. Sometime. Sometime. If I do, to, what I don't want to do on talking watches is is basically just go and here. <laughs> here's, is, all, here's, yeah, all here's, here's all the shit I bought. Here's all the shit I bought. I would love to. I'd love to bring on the Roger Smith. I'd love to bring the Kaguchi Nakagawa. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you um, some of the piece unique stuff and. Um, I would, I will show you everything if you want. <laughs> I know, we'd love to see it. <laughs> Thank you so much, appreciate yeah, it. Nice one, thank you.